<laughs> so Vampire in Brooklyn is Wes Craven's newest uh, entry in our Watch Along or uh, Wes Craven-a-thon. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, this movie, while it does have some comedy in it, it does feel like an Eddie Murphy film, but Eddie Murphy, for the most part, doesn't play goofy all that much in this. He's pretty serious throughout the film, yes. which is fairly surprising. Um, but it, it very much is still an Eddie Murphy film. Um, he dresses in uh, different costumes and, and wears different faces, much like he does in his other films, whether it's Coming to America or the Nutty Professor movies or whatever. This is always kind of his shtick. And, you know, to see it here is no surprise. And I was telling Kaylee that the premise of this movie is actually very similar to Coming to America because he comes to America Right, and he's looking for a girl. He's hiding his identity, like what he is. Mm -hmm. So that premise, and I think uh, this is New York, right? Yeah, uh, Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah, Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brooklyn. <laughs> Duh. I'm thinking in my head about no, freaking okay. uh, coming to America, but that's uh. yeah. Anyway, but um, but yeah, I just thought that was funny that the parallels there between this and coming to America. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. So uh, overall, what do you think of this film? Um, I, I mean, I like the film. I thought it was, it had a kind of, like, all of Wes Craven films so far have, like, this campiness to them. Yeah. And this is no exception. Um, it was really interesting to see Eddie Murphy in a role like this because I don't think I've ever seen him in, like, a serious role yeah. before. Even though this is, like, you know, serious, it's, you know, in quotation marks, it's light serious. Right. But it was interesting because, like, he's normally always just, like, pure comedy and when he's so, playing, um, Julius, Julius, yeah. Oh no, Julius, I or, think is the, that's his sidekick. That's the ghoul, right? His name in this, I'm totally I don't know. Well, he plays I, I, the I vampire. Yeah. He's not Dracula, right? Like he's not. He's Blackula. But they call him that. Well, anyway, it was interesting to see him like that. And I actually thought he did a really good job. I liked his performance. And, yeah. you know, when he was doing the character bits uh, with the, the preacher and, the Italian guy yeah. that like tripped me out because I was just he did like, that really well. He did that voice like super well, and like you know, obviously you could tell that there's like a ton of makeup on him, but still, I was like really impressed by it. I was like, oh my god, like he sounds and like looks Italian, like that's crazy. Yeah, I thought um, the makeup on him was really good in that. Yeah, I mean, considering, yeah, it was definitely really good. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I like vampires, so I'm not, you know, it's it's a really, like, tropey vampire movie, but I did like, so Julius, his, his ghoul, I liked how he started to decay throughout, and, you know, kind of all the gags with that. I thought that was cool, and I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. You know, yet again, Craven makes another film that I'm kind of just, like, watching, and I'm like, this, this is fine. Yeah. Right? Like, he has some things that were better than I remember, and then there's things like this, which is mostly just kind of like, they're okay, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's that's just it. Like, Craven's, most of his career is filled with these, like, fine films. Like, they're okay. They're like, they're fine. I'm like, I'm glad right? I watched it, because, you know, like, Vampire in Brooklyn, I don't know. I definitely had heard the title before, and kind yeah. of been like, oh, I wonder what that's about. I'm yeah. happy I've seen it, but I don't know how I'll, like frequently I'll be returning to it. <laughs> yeah, this you mid know? '90s thing is interesting because we got like, you know, a lot of a lot of like horror movies with um, a very a very strong focus on like black culture, mm. um, whether it's Tales from the Hood or his previous film to this, People Under the Stairs yeah. or whatever, um, which is cool. And I think this is just like how Hollywood can kind of start shifting the, the, the view mm -hmm. on things, right? When you, when you, and this is why representation in cinema matters so much. It shouldn't be forced, right? This is why I've said before on the channel, I think it's a, I think it's a bad move to make everything with black people about race sure, because it yeah. constantly focuses on the issue mm -hmm. and we never move past it and they're never just people. Right? You just want the black person in the movie who's leading the role, uh, to have the leading role, to just be a person. 
and that really starts to move away from this idea that we're all di- that we're different when you constantly bring up race every five seconds and it's like fucking white people and oh my other black my other you know black friends and all this stuff like we talk about race so much when they do that and I, it's just i don't know it, it, it's always a disservice i feel you're always going to make films about race you're always going to make like th- that's there's there's things to explore there yeah but you can't do it in every single film it's just too limiting yeah and I, it keeps I agree. the conversation and it, it, it constantly is always bringing it back to race not just like oh that guy was awesome in that movie right right, yeah. right? it's it, it's this like commentary on society and race and everyone's yeah. racist and you know I, I don't know and in this movie of course there's a lot of emphasis there's a lot of discussion of race and and, and that but I get it at this time. Right, because they were getting a lot of limelight. They weren't getting a lot of uh, screen time at that point mm-hmm. as leads. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I get it. But nowadays, it's like, okay, not every freaking five seconds, please. Sure. Well, uh, and especially, like, I, you know, uh, I definitely don't have a lot of um, primarily, like, black horror movies under my belt. But definitely, it seems like the ones from the 90s that... I've watched, which I don't know if I've watched any more than the three that you named, <laughs> honestly, but they're comedic, you know, like they have this kind of air to them and it's really interesting because, you know, now we have like Jordan Peele bringing oh, sure. some really like heavy, intense, like serious horror and even though there are, you know, uh, conversations about race in those films, like I, I think that they're masterpieces in their own, um, you know, in their own I don't know, in their own right, yeah. Um, but it's just a totally different, like, tone. Totally different. So it's really cool to see how the genre is, you know, evolving and being... And, and horror has always been, eh, for a lot of people, I think, like, a place where they can find acceptance. And, sure. you know, it's, it's open to a lot of different voices to, to have a platform. So, But it's just interesting to me that, like, it seems like the 90s stuff is very... Uh, silly and there's nothing wrong with that like I'm not talking down uh, towards it because I love you know horror comedies sure. but it's just it's interesting I'm just I don't know I'm, I'm kind of giving props to Wes Craven mm. for taking on two projects in a row and having a primarily black cast mm-hmm. in lead roles yeah right because that sure. was just wasn't like for the more high profile Mm -hmm. pictures that were being made you just weren't getting a lot of that Mm -hmm. um and i think i think that's really cool but so good on west for that um i don't know how these did financially and if you know i think uh you know but whatever anyways okay so this was written by uh eddie murphy and his brother charlie murphy which you know obviously is known very well from uh, the Chappelle show uh, but I, yeah, you can tell the, this was produced, starring, written, Eddie Murphy was a thousand percent like yeah. involved in this. Like this was something to him that he really wanted to do. This wasn't just some like project he took on a whim mm-hmm. where he was just like, Oh, his agent sent him the script or something. It was like, no, no, no. He sat down, he wrote this with his brother, mm-hmm. a couple other people too. But like he sat down, he wrote this with his family, he starred in it, produced it like, this was serious to him. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think cool. it's cool. I, I like I like the blending of like, you know, the coming to America nutty professor Ooh. style, but like yeah. horror. Yeah. It's I the horror that. spin mm-hmm. in the in the Eddie Murphy um, filmography. Yeah. And I you know, outside of like Haunted Mansion or something, mm. I, I don't know much else uh, horror that Eddie Murphy was all that much a part of sure. as like mm. a lead mm. but um i, I, I like it I, it's mm. I, I don't love this movie but i thought that um if i am correct yeah julius julius the ghoul is my favorite thing in the movie <laughs> i think he's super funny yeah. i think like everything that he does and says in this movie is is really great and mm. i feel like he elevates the film really really mm-hmm. well yeah like if it wasn't for Julius, I think that I would probably be more on the dislike side. I'd be kind of just like, this is a flat movie. Yeah, but they have such a good dynamic and chemistry together for all the comedic bits. Yeah. Because, um, what did we say his name was? Vampire? We did. 
Okay, we didn't say it. The vampire. <laughs> the vampire. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, he's so much more serious, and Julius is really funny, especially put up against it. I also want to mention that I, I did actually find this movie weirdly romantic in some sense, too, mm. um, which I really like because I do find. Typical vampire. Right? It's tropey, but I like romantic vampires. Like, I always will. I have since I was younger. I like seeing new things with vampires, too, but, you know, this has all the standard um, old timey stuff with them. And uh, I liked, you know, I liked it. Speaking of standard stuff, we get some uh, faces that we recognize from other yes. Wes Craven mm -hmm. uh, films here. We get Mitch from Shocker, <laughs> as well as yeah. um, Vision, Night, Night Visions. Yep, Night yep. Visions. Yeah. Dark. Uh, <laughs> darkness. <laughs> of the Valley of Darkness, or whatever the hell I called it. I know. Um, yeah, he plays like some gangster yeah. in this. He his his accent in in Night Visions was horrendous. His 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 impression of like an Italian mobster here was okay. It was fine. It was fine yeah. yeah. It, the the cop whatever the hell accent he was trying to pull off in Night Visions, <laughs> no. I don't know what that was, yeah. but I hope he shelved it forever. <laughs> He's like, "Oh man, what was I doing there?" Valley of Darkness, man, like not going back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dark memories <laughs> um but yeah we got him mm -hmm. we got the mom from invitation to hell mm -hmm. and uh she plays a cop in this named dewey yeah yeah you which thought that would i don't know if like <laughs> if that's brought over because yeah. i want to say scream was his next movie Mm. He did it right very closely after this. Oh, okay. I want to say it's this, then Scream, because I think this is like 94. Uh, Scream's 96. Uh -huh. And then I think we take, and then he does like Scream 2 and what on, but, and then 3, yeah. I think, because we're not covering the Screams. And then he not goes to yet. Cursed, right? Yeah. So, it, yeah, this is like the movie before, and, and, and it's a cop named Dewey who becomes captain. Doesn't Dewey become captain in like 4? What is he, sheriff or? Uh, he does. I've only seen the scream. Like oh, right. I've you seen the first seen. scream a good amount. I've seen scream four more. But you have. Yeah. That's right. Yes, yeah. I've only seen all the other. <laughs> he becomes the ones. chief. I think he's the chief of police mm. or something like that. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm not a scream fan, so. But he's I don't like know. a scream expert. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, not compared to a lot of people. I guess so. Definitely. Um. Okay. Um. I like how. I think it's Mitch. Yeah, it's Mitch. Mitch Pelleggi? Pelleggi? <laughs> however the fuck you say his name. Not Mitch uh, Hedberg. <laughs> no. Skinner from x -Hoth. Yes. Um, he gets his heart torn from his <laughs> chest, to which he responds, not a scream, not any kind of, like, volatile reaction. He just says, Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> and then dies. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Heart ripped from your chest. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's, it's super great. Fucking ludicrous yes. is what it is. That's a tough ass dude. dude. That's a that's real gangster like, shit there. Can you you can't live, right? Like if they if your heart gets ripped out, like you're unconscious dead immediately, right? Or is there I mean, still I mean there's still blood in you. It would depend on it. you have like a few seconds of consciousness before you die? No, if you immediately lost blood pressure, you would immediately drop. Oh, but yeah, like, right. if you're if you're like if if all if all of the like um, arteries and everything were still connected, because there's probably some give to them. So you could probably like open it up and pull it out a little. You couldn't pull it this far <laughs> out, but you maybe I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm not a doctor, but I would assume there's some wiggle room. So you could like grab it and move it a little bit and it'd still be beating, oh. <laughs> right? But he couldn't like pull it out of his chest and let it beat without, there wouldn't be anything contracting it without it being connected to your, um, your circulatory system and, uh, right? Yeah. Like you, you have to have impulses. The heart itself, I don't think, would, would work on its own. Yeah. And, yeah, once once you lose blood pressure, like yeah. if you instantly drop to zero blood pressure, you go out. Yeah. Right? But I don't know, so they, they say that when you get your head cut off, like if you've ever had like the guillotine, your head 
is like still aware or something that's for like wild. five or eight yeah. seconds or something. I've heard that too. That's crazy. I don't know how true that is. That's just like the but brain like, still like has stimulation and it. yeah. some like electrical some synapses stuff going, are on. going off. That would be insane. Yeah. That would be crazy. Well, I don't ever want to be petted to have that experience. No, <laughs> no, no thanks. Um, this is our opinions on uh, the medical. medical field, which we know very little about. Not so like, don't listen to it. us. Don't rip anybody's heart out of their chest uh, and then think they're going to still live. Yeah, don't do that. They're not, they're not going to. Um, anyways, so our vamp here has a very interesting power. So most like vampires or Wolverine or whoever the hell... They do have the ability to heal or, mm -hmm. you know, regenerate. This vampire has the ability to regenerate his clothing. <laughs> he gets yeah. shot through his clothing. He looks down and he like waves his hand and the shirt reforms. Yeah. Whoa. Is he that does, shirt like well, made out of his body? He <laughs> like, does what? spells though. He does like magic. So right. Yeah. So he's not, it's not just. He's got like, vampire abilities. Too. Yeah, it's like magic that he can do. Probably because we got the witch doctor from Serpent, Serpent and the, the Rainbow. Rainbow in here. Yeah. Yeah. Little little voodoo too. Yeah. Little vampire voodoo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He heals his shirt. Yes. That's. It's funny. Like, don't screw up my it's clothes. It's really funny. Um, he's got, yeah, he's got good style. Yeah. Uh, Kaylee didn't find this scene anywhere near as funny as me because it's, it's animal violence. Oh. But when the dog, yet again, the dog always knows. The dog always the knows. The dog could pick the vampire out of the crowd, the dog for the police, and he just like points his finger at the dog, <laughs> and the dog just shoots straight up in the air like a freaking rocket ship. <laughs> it's awful. And flies. And the cop's reaction is just kind of like, huh? Huh? And the dog like, lands in the river. Oh my god. It's that so ridiculous. killed me. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> the dog was just like, yipe! And it just like <laughs> took off like a rocket ship. And the, everyone's reaction was kind of just like, <laughs> that was odd. That was odd that a dog just fucking erupted and flew into space. And like no one f got freaked out by that. No one like ran <laughs> off. Nobody screamed. The cop just kind of was like, huh? Yeah. But he wasn't he on a leash. He was on a leash because he was holding him back. So why wouldn't he blow up? Why wouldn't he take the guy with him? It just like ripped off. Should have Mary his... Poppins that guy <laughs> yeah, right out of there. It should have. But it just I think it just ripped off his collar. Sure. I don't know. I was sad. I didn't want that dog to die. He wasn't doing nothing but his job. Maybe he swam back. Too sure. No, probably not. No, he like exploded. That was super funny though. <laughs> the dog it's just, just the goes speed at which, sky high. And like the speed and the height. It's all very extreme. That is funny, but it's the lack of reactions from everyone <laughs> that just amplified it to a hundred for me. Yeah. It was like a ten and then no one reacted. It was like <laughs> times ten. I was just like, what is happening? <laughs> nobody Why is nobody anything. reacting to anything right now? Um, just like the, the, the landlord barely reacting to the fact that the guy he just saw earlier is now missing an ear. Yeah. He's like, well, oh, you missing an ear? And the guy's like, oh, oh yeah. Uh. And he's <laughs> just kind of, they go back to the conversation. Like it's normal. Like if yeah. you're, like if I was talking to somebody and they're just, their ear was like ripped off <laughs> and they were bleeding from it, yeah. I would be like. We need to seek medical yes. attention immediately. <laughs> Things are hard in the hood. They are. That's why they're yeah. Yeah. You don't. They don't question. He's just like, damn boy, <laughs> that's a hard ass freaking response to getting your ear ripped off. No biggie though. Yeah, no biggie. No biggie. Um, but yeah, him falling apart throughout the movie, his hand falling off. Um, he has to keep checking his dick. Yeah. Make sure that. I mean, really gonna, I don't know who the hell he thinks he's putting that in. I don't know either, but it Looking is funny like that. that, yeah, nobody probably at all. Maybe a lady ghoul. Well, we see how good he is with the women in this when our vampire is trying to get oh, his God. lady and he comes up and he cock blocks with his words. So hard. He had her. She was like, I'm there yeah. for it. I'm dancing. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And then he was just like, he's trying, like, I don't even know what he says, but he's basically like, he's just trying to get you laid. Yeah. <laughs> it's so... Like, such a different vibe, and she's immediately like, no way. It's not how you talk to the queen of Wakanda. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yes. No. Nope. He should know better. Yes, he should. Wakanda forever. <laughs> Wakanda forever. Um, and yeah, he can also uh, shape shift into people, which I like this because, mm-hmm. like, I don't know if I've seen that much in in other vampire movies. Sure. Where he can literally take on the appearance of another person, like yeah. they can morph into like dogs or bats or whatever but like other humans and Mm -hmm. look just like them yeah that's different Mm -hmm. um but it explains the eddie murphyisms right where he's another person right but he's playing the same he's playing that character but he's in their skin right right like in the other movies he's just those other characters but in this one it it's an explanation that no that is him yeah he's just playing that guy so I, I kind of liked that that was written in as like, no, 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 that's not, he's not going to just be Eddie Murphy as a different guy. It's still going to be Eddie Murphy's character just pretending to be a different guy. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but as Kaylee said, like the, the Italian like thief mm-hmm. or criminal guy was cool. Really liked that. And then we get the preacher who's like, we're going to hold the sermon outside. because oh my, my hair is starting to, my jerry curls caught on fire. It's- so funny the whole that whole scene was really really good you down you down it was like he was down on like the south side with two dollar hole oh yeah he's like telling everybody uh, their business you know he turned into there Hmm. he turned into freaking um he turned into the dude from storm of the century he knew everyone's secrets and he turned it against them oh boy yep They should have given him what he wanted and he'd go away. He would have, but they didn't didn't give him the kid. We've talked too much about the Storm of the Century thing. We always talk about the Storm of the Century. I think about it a lot, honestly. Yeah, because they gave him the wrong kid. Yes, (laughs) we were just talking about this in the store the other day. You have one shitty bratty kid there that nobody likes, not even his parents. And you give him the good kid, one of the good ones. And you you give him the kid with the fairy saddle. Like, what? No. No, you don't do that. You don't give the kid with the fairy saddle to him. No, you give him the little shit that no one cares yes. about. Yes, 100%. That kid that plays a fuckhead in every movie he's in. <laughs> They're like, where's that fuckhead kid? We need a <laughs> fuckhead kid him. character for the cat in the hat. Where is he? That's, yeah. Anyways. Um, moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I thought that scene was funny when he's going out and he's telling... You know, he's telling everyone in the audience, like, what this person was doing, what this person was doing. And then when the, the competition shows up, he rats him out. But this is the this is the first time where he's telling lies. Yes. Yeah. At least I think that's what he's... He might be lying the whole time, but it's it doesn't totally look possible. like it. Yeah. I just... I thought it was so funny that he was like, evil is good. <laughs> like, just getting all of them to agree with him. I yeah. found that really hilarious because it was like, what? <laughs> what what um and let's see we've got the what is that even mean what i don't even know what the hell i wrote down here i know oh i know her paintings become true yes which is interesting she has some kind of link once because there was another chick in a coffin on the boat, and that's what, like, she bites her and, like, transfers it over to her or something? I never, I didn't understand that. I didn't either. Because I thought he was looking for the chick in the coffin. But then, like, the chick in the coffin, we never saw her again. And she just, it just became the the cop chick. And that, mm-hmm. that just, I didn't get that at all. No, neither did I. Angela Bess- or I honestly, Angela like, Bissette kind of forgot like, about it, too, so I have no idea. I don't have an answer to that at all. I need to go back and rewatch it because I don't get that at all. Mm-hmm. He was like, I'm looking for a woman. And I was like, oh, it must be the chick you brought with you. Yeah, but it's That's not. in the coffin in the ship. Yeah. But then she like bit her and then I guess it transferred to her and that girl's just dead now or something. I don't know. Because she's another vampire. I thought she would just make her a vampire too. I honestly don't really remember her even being bitten. So <laughs> There's another chick in the coffin. Yeah. And she like came up and like, she's like, oh. oh. Right? That's what happened, no? She bit her? I thought she bit her. I don't know. Maybe she didn't bite her. What the hell else was she there for? <laughs> I don't know. He just has right. some, like, he's transferring. He's like, I'm done with my my other wife. Is that what happened? Oh, maybe that is what it is. Like, maybe her body was, like, failing. Why'd he bring her then? 
to transfer. <laughs> no, I'm an answer. I don't know. I don't. I, I, don't don't, I didn't understand that scene. I should yeah. have paid better attention and rewound it, but I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, we just watched like, so like, many movies that like I never I never take the time to really focus in on certain on things. some things. Yeah, I'm just like what what happened? Like sometimes we miss things, and I'm just like. <laughs> well, like it's probably not important. We got six other <laughs> movies to watch tonight. Moving on. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's the quality of this channel. <laughs> <laughs> People come here for explanations. It's just these we reviews. We don't, we don't got them. But these reviews are some we do. You know, some yeah. we do. I thought we did a really good job on like smile. Of course. Right. Yeah. I thought I did a really good job on like the Babadook stuff like that. Like those are movies I understand. These kinds of things, I don't think there are explanations. Yeah. And I think you just, I'm just, because we've had these fun discussions on here where I'm just like breaking the logic apart on these movies. And yeah. It's like there is no, there is no defending this stuff. Right. We have like a fun time trying to figure it out, but it isn't there. The I don't reality, know. Yeah. If you know, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Anyway, um, so. The the other okay, I didn't understand this whole dynamic between the two cops because I thought she was like his new partner because she brings him home to her very promiscuous roommate. Yeah. Who's just like throwing herself at literally anyone who will look in her direction. Yes. Just a guy walking by and she's like, Pussy, anybody? Pussy? Pussy? Anybody? <laughs> Here? No? You? No? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's Pussy 40. going once, going twice, sold. It just <laughs> It was like a pussy auction. It was crazy. She's pussy just going auction. out there. <laughs> Do I hear five, 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 ten, ten, five, ten, ten, ten? <laughs> um, these are inches, by the way. Oh, um, five to ten is a huge jump. It's a jump. <laughs> it's a jump. It's a jump for sure. It's, it's double. I don't know if she's getting much bigger. Some guys just swinging like by. Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Do I hear twelve? <laughs> you know, people are like, no, twelve. I don't even got half that. Um, but yeah, I just, I didn't understand. I thought they were new partners because this was the first time he'd ever been to her house. And I, like, this is, the, I thought they were, they were like newer partners together, we definitely, but there was like a romance instantly. You like, don't date your partner. No, you don't. But and, I, and it should be like, look at Fox, like Mulder and Scully, like they're together for so long before like anything ever even happens, even though yeah. something should have happened a long time ago, oh my God. you try not to. To fuck your partner like sure. if you're a cop right if, a, if you get you know well. yeah it's a um it's a what is it's not a casualty <laughs> <laughs> What's the it's word a casualty of war <laughs> like a liability it's a liability yeah. to do that yeah i don't know this is another part that i guess i wasn't paying attention because i thought they were partners like longer <laughs> and like they were but he's never been to her house before i mean yeah why not maybe they're not they're not like friends I they're swear partners. when they're coming you're probably right when, when they I'm talk to right. captain dewey yeah i thought it was like you know how how's your new partner or something I, I could be... Comp I'm, You're probably right. I'm just too many movies. We watched too many movies. And we watched know. this a while ago. But we never get we to did. these reviews immediately. So either way, whether they're new or old, they have like a thing and it's weird. It's really awkward when she brings him to her apartment. And I don't buy their like, romance at all. No, I don't buy it, but it's there. Like it definitely It's there, is. of course. Yeah. He's chasing her the whole movie. Yeah. He it's, wants her and weird. she wants him. But it felt, I swear they're new. I feel like they just met and she's instantly like pissed off that he's sleeping with her roommate. Yeah. And it's like, I wanted him. And it's like, you just get, didn't you guys just meet and shouldn't you not be dating? Yeah, sure. But I could be wrong. Maybe they've been partners forever. And she's like, I've had my eye on him since the beginning. Right. But now we're going to bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. But they're both going after each other at the same time. Yeah. This is why it feels new. Mm -hmm. Because they're both like all about each other and going after each other all in this night. Sure. This yeah. whole freaking movie takes place in like two nights. I know. It's crazy. It's like really fast. Super fast. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. Uh, but when they finally get down to having sex, the partners, she scratches his back with all four nails to full blood scratch the whole way. And he has no reaction. Yeah. Just like those people with the exploding dog. <laughs> He's just kind of like, oh. 
Dude, no. if you took your nails and dug them into my back and left a complete red line trail of blood all through it my back, hurt dude, so it would bad. kill. No, dude, nobody would be into that. It would be immediately like, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, somebody probably is. Okay, maybe that, somebody. Sure. But yeah, it's an intense scratch. It's not like a. No, it's not a playful, like, oh my God, look, I left marks. No, this is like, I left <laughs> scars. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he has, like, no reaction. This is how bad he wants her, even though he's only known her for, like, four hours. I think. <laughs> uh, um, anyways, <laughs> evil is good. Evil is good. Yeah. The preacher says so. Yeah. Yeah, I like that he's, like, preaching to them. And and this kind of reminds me of the scene in um, The Last Exorcism when Cotton says, like, I could go up there and preach a banana bread sermon. Right, Like, yeah. these people aren't even listening yeah. to me anymore. And there he's there, she's kind of like, no, you underestimate your audience. And he's like, I will preach a banana bread sermon. Uh, even though that scene's always made me laugh because he'll always say, like, in, if you take, like, four bananas and p- put it together in a bowl with some sugar, put it in the oven for 400 degrees, you'll have... Bre- banana bread and they're all like this and then i'm like if you just put bananas and sugar yeah, in the oven it would catch on fire we talked about making this you need before. like <laughs> you need some flour yeah. you need like there's a lot more ingredients than just bananas and sugar yeah. cotton but it is, it is really <laughs> funny because it's like yeah like you know definitely that is a thing with um i don't want to say like every christian but like you know in these types of like groups where they are just like agreeing with what the pastor says and and agreeing with each other and it's a very like mob mentality where you're just like yeah you know you get caught up in it that's what that's part of the appeal for a lot of people yeah Um, but it's funny in this scene when he's like telling them that evil is good yeah if you believe in good you have to believe in evil and, and he's not, like, evil. wrong in that either, yeah. which is what's really funny. Because, like, you do have to have, like, in order to have good, you have to have the opposite. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you have to have contrast. Right. Right. There is no good without bad. Yes. Right? Like, that that concept doesn't exist. But that doesn't mean, like, what he's saying. Like, they don't equal the same thing. <laughs> like, you know, there's still differences. Sure. In that. <laughs> like, no, just because is, one exists and the other bad for a reason. Is a resp- yeah. Bad is bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> bad is bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, um, and he can also uh, alter, this is one of again with his clothing, he can alter the appearance of his surroundings too. Mm-hmm. So he makes that like freaking crack apartment. Oh my gosh, it makes it look some, so good. Yeah. yeah, it's like this like super modern, fancy, ritzy thing. Yeah. And he says too that he's like using like every spell that he knows. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I mean, she, she kills him. And then, like, gets with her partner, and that's, it's so fast. Like, all that stuff, it's just, like, he's so easy to kill. These things are always so stupid. It's like, these guys have lived for a thousand years. They've had all this, you know, different success with um, killing and, 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 you know, taking on somebody. He, he took on gangsters who shot him and all this stuff. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and he's had other wives, I think. That's who he brought with him. Mm-hmm. And he's had other opponents that are probably pretty formidable. And this girl just, like, kills him in, like, a night. Yeah. Pretty easily. Yeah. But he lets his guard down for love. Um, and then uh, Julius gets his hand on the ring, plops it on his finger, and his landlord becomes his new ghoul. Yeah. And he becomes the new vampire. So yeah. I guess the vampire in this is is kind of cursed with jewelry. Mm-hmm. So if he like takes that off, would he not be a vampire anymore? Maybe. Yeah, maybe he'd be a ghoul. Maybe he'd start decaying. Yeah, but even even Eddie Murphy's vampire, like, does he, if he gets that ring cut off, is he like Sauron? He gets the... Oh, yeah. Maybe. He cuts the <laughs> ring, and then he's like, sends ring wraiths out after it. Mm. Probably not. Probably not that. The ghoul would be like, my precious. My precious. Yeah, Julius becomes freaking Gollum. He does. At the end of this, but like a... Like one ring. Pimp Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> Such a weird image. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's that. It's okay. I had fun. Yeah. I had fun. I also want to mention that um, Angela Bissett, mm-hmm. who is uh, the main lead in this from Black Panther, um, her stunt woman during this film was killed. I don't know during oh. what... 
During the film? Yeah. Doing one of the stunts in this movie. And I'm not honestly sure from the action sequences and whatnot. There's nothing really that crazy. So I'm like looking at the movie like I was trying to watch it like where what's the stunt that got someone killed but maybe they just pulled that stunt from the film completely maybe, yeah probably they probably didn't have anyone else repro- you know reproduce oh, it oh gosh that's awful but yeah i don't know what the stunt was i didn't look uh-huh. further into it but i just saw and read that her stunt woman died on this film so wow. um it's always weird when people die on films like this because it's like you know someone died on the set of weekend at bernie's 2 and it's like I don't know. I, I'd be so pissed if I was the family member. Like, did you really need to make this movie? Sure. <laughs> like, sure. did we get it? Bernie's really need to exist for like, the for death of my die. father. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, that's tough. That's really tough. Ugh, I know, but Gosh. whatever. Anyways, let's move on, shall we? Bye. Bye.